Hey, 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 guys, Altavis Pelza here, your voice manager, with another episode of the Hashtag Speak Easy podcast, where we go and talk about what it means to be successful in your first five years of business. Listen, I understand. I get it. It all sounds good. I know it's this shiny object syndrome that you're just like, I need Facebook ad class, and I need this book on marketing and doing graphics, but then somewhere along the line, we kind of get burnt out because we're doing a lot of things, um, but nothing that is really moving our needle forward. That's like exactly why I'm excited to have this empire discussion when it comes to our business with Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Hi, Hi. I Hi. am cracking up because everything you're saying is so true. <laughs> I need this course and this webinar and this workshop, and I need to be on the media. I need press. I need PR. It is so true. We get distracted by these shiny objects. Oh my goodness. So often we come in and, and this, you know, it's funny because we think about how they talk about, you know, businesses don't last the first five years. And I think some of that is because we're spending money on stuff we don't need. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can't tell you how many women business owners come to me and they haven't paid themselves. The first year goes by, they didn't pay themselves. The second year, the third year. Now their spouse is saying them, why are you doing this? You need to start earning money. But I'm still investing. I'm still investing. So finding that balance of making it worth your while and paying yourself your worth while also knowing how much to put back into the business, with your, whether it's your time, because we put a ton of time into our businesses, Ooh, yes, what equity or money back into the business. And Part of the empire that I teach is we actually have a savings vehicle that every time you get paid LTVs, the money goes in and that bucket of money is to invest it back in your business. So you don't invest from cash flow. That's mm. the biggest reason you can't grow is because you're constantly robbing your cash flow, which means you're never going to pay yourself. It's or hire, hire people. Oh, that part. That is another piece of it. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is going to be a great episode. Before we jump in, Jessica, let everybody know who you are, and then we'll go ahead and dive into this conversation. I know I got really excited about <laughs> what we're talking about, but yes. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. I am Jessica Weaver. I am a wealth advisor, a best-selling author of Strong Woman, Stronger Assets and Time to Refine. And my latest book, Confessions of a Money Queen, and I also have a blog called Not Your Father's Advisor, because that is my, that is who I am. I am not your father's advisor. I am a very different take on money. I focus on the relationship with money, your money systems, the internal factors that affect your bank account. And then we look at the external factors. The external factors are not going to do anything unless we fix what's going on on the inside and really how we can raise our net worth by raising our self-worth. Ooh, that part. So we started out this conversation talking about some heavy hitting things because for one, as entrepreneurs, most entrepreneurs do not pay themselves. They don't even know what that is. <laughs> and we talked about- Can I give you a statistic? Oh, sure. So women business owners make up about 39% of small businesses, but we only bring in 4% of the income for small businesses. So yeah, we're not paying ourselves. <laughs> wow. That number is horribly low. That is. That is part of that glass ceiling that we need to shatter today on this episode. <laughs> oh my goodness. And shatter it, we shall. Because uh, we talked about, you know, that one important thing, uh, getting to the point where we can stop just pouring into the business and we can allow the business to start pouring into us. So mm -hmm. some people are like, oh, great. You know, day one, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I pay myself. And mm, that may not always be the best thing either. So Jessica, let's talk about what that day one looks like. As, as opposed to that kind of like day 1000 may look like when it comes to paying yourself and your business. Yes. And it should just become part of your system. 
I'm a big believer in money systems. I have five money systems. But even if it's a small percentage, it needs to be built into the business plan, paying yourself. Even if it's 1% on day one. What I find to be the biggest areas that we struggle with paying ourselves are the areas when we have huge growth. So in the beginning, right, all this, and you're new to the marketplace, there's a lot of buzz and energy around you. People are like, ooh, this is interesting. I want to learn more. I want to work with you. And you don't have so much infrastructure and set place yet. So yes, that takes investing in. Or even for my own business, during COVID, I have two young, young kids, three and three-year-old and a one-year-old. So I had to find ways to, yes, earn money while I'm not at work, but also streamline everything, make everything work together without me having to do the servicing. So I invested again into the infrastructure and we had huge growth then. So understanding kind of the ebb and flow of business and knowing that in order to keep growing, it will take investing back in so that you can have the infrastructure and the system so you can keep supporting yourself so you're not trading life energy nonstop for your business. That's what equity we talked about before. Um, and also not hitting burnout. I think that's what it always leads back to, right? Finding that balance of money putting into it, but also the time into it. How much time do we want to invest into it without having hitting burnout after burnout? I think that last year for me was a year of burnout. I don't know about for you, but a lot of business owners, especially with young, with children, hit burnout, trying to do it all and not being able to. You know, that was really important that you said that. I think I had, a, I can't tell you how many um, female entrepreneurs reached out to me and said, can't do it anymore. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm just shutting down. And, and I was just like, no, but what about the people you serve? <laughs> and, um, you know, but there were still other businesses that were starting and growing and, and thriving. And, you know, you made a very good point by saying, you know, your systems matter. Mm -hmm. They really do matter. And coming in, I know we kind of think, you know, you, it's boot, we're bootstrapping it. So we don't need to have every system in place. And, you know, if, if we get it, we'll get to it later. But there are some things that you really need to have in place in the beginning um, that are going to help you to, to at least make it, you know, over the little humps. Now, when some of the bigger mountains come, it, it's going to be a little harder. 2020 was a, was, was a boulder. No, not even a boulder. It was a <laughs> mountain. <laughs> yes. it, was, it was like a collection of mountains and yes. none of us had the proper tools <laughs> to be able no. to find them. We were all blindsided by it. We, I was in denial for the longest time. School's not going to close. School's not going to close. Oh, it's closed. Okay. Now, and then we're playing catch up, trying to react to all the news, constantly taking in news too and processing and then figuring out how is this going to affect my family life, my work? Can I do both? What does that look like? And it gave me chills when you said how many women came to you saying they can't do it anymore because you're right. Last year was such a testing year and we got tired of pivoting, constantly pivoting and taking in new information. So I know the systems, I'll give you an example. One woman, Chris, who I've been working with for a while now, she had no income for a few months during COVID, but because of the systems that we taught her, especially my stable money saver, she was able to still pay herself, pay her bills, pay for her car and save for retirement, despite not having income for three months. So having systems that can build in even unexpected things like a COVID pandemic or your business having to be shut down so you can be home with your family. Maybe it's a health thing happening with your family, being able to take the time to be with your family and not worrying about if your business is going to make it or not. Mm, yeah, because that can play very heavy on your shoulders while you're trying to build a business. That is so true. The guilt, yeah. right? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. The guilt and constantly being pulled back and forth. Yes. Uh, oh, the stories we have. <laughs> we can <laughs> talk for hours on this. <laughs> but with that being said, also let everybody know a little bit about this hashtag pink flicks. 
So I'm probably one of the few advisors who have a hashtag <laughs> pink fix. And it started several years ago when, cause my whole world is it's pink and people know me as a pink advisor, everything I wear pink, pink lipstick, but it's really the energy that I'm trying to bring to money. I want to make it a fun, engaging, light conversation to get you re-engaged with money, wanting to be an active participant in the conversation. And I would refer to people getting their money tip or whatever they needed that day, whether it's from our blog, not your father's advisor, from a book or just some money tip, a story, a belief for the day as getting their pink fix. <laughs> and knowing that when it comes to money, it's never a quick fix. Right? We, we, and I think that's part of the dish, those sparkly things you were talking about earlier, right? It's like, oh, if I have Facebook ads, it's going to fix my business. Well, it's never that simple. We wish it was, but it's a process. It doesn't have to be an overwhelming long drawn out process, but there is a process to Rewriting your relationship with money, your beliefs, letting go of your ego when it comes to money, letting go of your fears with money. It is a process. So we started to say, instead of a quick fix, let's focus on a pink fix. It can be a fun, engaging process, but it is a process. It's not a Band-Aid because that's the worst thing that happens, right? You give them one tip and then they find themselves even deeper in a hole because it wasn't the real reason they got into debt. Right. Just canceling the debt doesn't mean they're not going to be in debt five, 10 years later. That's what it's that cycle. Jessica, wait, wait, wait. Say that one more time because I think people miss that part. They think that if I just pay it off, then everything will be perfectly fine. Yes. And I can't tell you, Altavis, how many times that happens. And then they come back to me 10 years later closer to retirement. And now we have to take more of their retirement money to pay, to pay the credit card company, not even to use it for fun, for trips, for the retirement to pay the credit card company. And I just had a call with one of the women in our Lyft community, Brigitte, and she, her father paid off three of her credit cards. And it was such a gift. But the biggest shift was before, she would never have allowed him to do that because she knew she would have gotten back into credit card debt because she didn't have the right systems, the trust in herself even, the trust in herself to be able to get out of it. And then what would, hap would have happened if she got back into credit card debt? Not only would she have failed herself, she would have felt like a failure to her dad. But now she was willing to accept it because she knows she has the support and guidance to make sure it doesn't happen again. So that's the biggest shift is one is the trust in yourself, knowing the right strategies to get out of debt and stay out of debt is the biggest thing too. Because so That is so it. valuable. I know for me, one of the big things was I had a bad, a horrible relationship with money, poverty mindset. Sure. Um, saving, saving for what, uh, you know, <laughs> but when it came to the business, um, and speak easy podcast listeners, you guys know, I'm very transparent about my journey. So what I found myself doing was I was putting out all this money to speak on stages, putting out all this money to go to events and, and I, oh, I could just write it off. So I'll just go ahead and go. And I wasn't making any money in return. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself on all of these wonderful stages and speaking nationwide, you guys. I yeah. can't even tell you how many events I went to and I was speaking and people didn't sign up for programs and because the audience was not necessarily my audience. And so mm -hmm. it was, it turned out to be a lot of times a waste of money even up to the point where I saw myself putting out two and $3,000 to go and speak at an event and I would only make a couple hundred back. Mm -hmm. So that brings up such a good point. The intention behind what we're spending our money and going into it. Okay, what is the intention? What is this investment of $2,000? What is that going to bring back into my world? 
and knowing I like to play a game that whatever money I invest into the business, I get back a hundredfold. I get back in surplus. So I'll make it back and then some. And that just puts me in the mindset of, okay, this is where I need to spend money to grow the money, to grow the, the pipeline, to get more people in the world. And not, I wouldn't say it was wasted because the experience you got from speaking on all those stages is incredible. <laughs> and the confidence, I mean, that is an amazing experience to have and stuff. But it is true. Like, what is the call to action? What are you leading people to? And to have different streams of income. And that's part of the empire that we talk about. We actually have our Money Empire Workshop Day coming up here in April, where we talk about all of these money systems, and especially for women business owners, how to build three to four streams of income for their business and having streams that are tied to their time, right? Having one-on-one -on -one time with you, but also having streams that isn't, aren't tied to your time, your life energy constantly being traded for money and building, as you can imagine, like this pyramid, these streams of income constantly flowing in. And that allows you to not be so reliant on one stream of income. Because what happens, like we learned in COVID, it could at any point get altered exactly. or paused. <laughs> you think, think of a faucet getting shut off and you're waiting for the plumber to come back and open it up. Having different sources. And I created this because I read retirees, happy retirees have three to four income sources. And it's because they have sense of security from it. They're not tied to what happens in the markets. They're not tied to social security or their pension. They have all these other ones that will support them if one takes a hit or gets paused or stopped. So why don't, why not we do this for our life? And when you do it right, you don't have to sacrifice your time to build your business. Mm, I like that. I like that because I think that unfortunately that's where a lot of people are is they have sacrificed their time. And uh, I have to say it, 2020 was a very big indicator for, you know, I, I said it this way. It was an indicator of where there were cracks in the foundation. Oh, that is such a good point. Yes. And it was a good time to assess, yeah, how do we fill those cracks? How do we get a strong, sturdy foundation that you can grow from? That infrastructure is so important to have support, to have systems in place, to have even mentors and coaches to help you instead of trying to DIY it for a year, months, years. Really? I'm going to Google search it and find the solution. Yes. <laughs> and then we just get overloaded. There's too much information out there. Too much information. So you find somebody that it feels good, that you admire, respect, and especially somebody who has, who has done what you want to do. Right. They've been in your shoes. They know what obstacles, what hurdles you're, you're going to hit. Right? I have to say, I have a business coach. I have a spiritual coach. And I'm so grateful to pay them. Because I don't want to make mistakes and waste more time and money, especially the time. Mm -hmm. Right, Altavis, have you ever thought, to me, money can buy us time or can buy us stuff? Ooh, that part. And at your stage in life, what would you, what are your priority? What would you rather have, time it's, or stuff? It's time. <laughs> it's time. I, I tell people all the time, and uh, being someone who worked in retail management for the majority of my life oh. um, for pretty, pretty much actually for about half, almost half of my life, I worked in retail management in some way, shape or form. And starting as early as 13 working and it was, you were always limited by the value somebody else put on your time. Ooh. That is so true. That just gave me chills. Yeah. Right. And so it, nice it, it, it was like, it was a horrible habit, but I mean, you do what you have to do to make the money. So, mm -hmm. so something that I learned in the transition was, whereas before it was, okay, you need more money, then you get a second job, you get a third job. And constantly working more. You Right. You run yourself into the ground. And then 
when that mindset shift happened, it was, okay, well, use your intelligence. What is it that you have to offer? What wisdom do you have? You know, what is it that you can sell or that you have to offer? I don't have to go and get a job to make more money and, and be, you know, again, confined by somebody else's time. I can do something in my timing, put it out there and go with that as opposed to me killing myself and then not even being able to fully use because if you think about it when you're working the second job you're still you're putting out more money because you got to eat more money because you got to drive wherever you're driving or you got to get there and then you're getting home and you're exhausted every day yes the burnout yeah I feel like the especially the corporate world they just they suck your soul out by the end, because I work with a lot of women, I work with a lot of women business owners, and then on the corporate side, and by the time they put their 30 years in, they are running, (laughs) running, fleeing from their job, because they've traded their whole life energy, they've been handcuffed to a desk their entire life, and they don't even know who they are, what they like to do, you know, forget what a hobby is, and it's true. And that's something that our society is really bought into is, you know, in order to earn more, we have to work more hours. Like, why do let's start working more strategically, <laughs> yeah, smarter <laughs> and go into building your plan, your overall business plan, your money plan on, okay, this is the amount of income I want. This is the kind of lifestyle I'm after. Now let's back into how I'm going to figure out my prices and my packages instead of saying, well, this is what everyone is selling it for. This is what I'll sell it for, right? Separating ourselves from the herd and building your business around your ideal lifestyle and income. Uh, This has been an amazing interview. I absolutely love it, Jessica. Uh, Speakeasy podcast listeners, you guys know that this is always about you because without you, there is no Speakeasy podcast. And we mm-hmm. we want to be sure that you're getting the information, the resources, the having the conversations. So Jessica, let them know how they can find out more about what it is that you do and how they can reach out to you online. Of course. Thank you so much for having me on here and bringing me into your, your audience, your amazing community. Everyone can go to jessicaweaver.com. My books are there. We also have an amazing book bonus pre-launch for my new book, Confessions of a Money Queen, where you can go and you'll get money meditations, money mindset meditations, a whole spirit money guide workbook, 10-day workbook that will take you through different journal prompts, meditations, because the whole thing about money is we really need to get our mindset, our emotions, the spirit of money to that next level along with the money. Because if not, we're never gonna be in alignment with our worth. And when we do that, we're basically are repelling money. I want all channels, every no money blocks. I want you com- constantly welcoming money <laughs> into your life. <laughs> I want the money flow to be easy for you and to trust yourself to receive it. Trust yourself that you are worth raising your prices. And I encourage everyone who's listening to this, see how you can increase your prices. Right. You are worth it. There's nothing more that you need to do to be worth a higher price and to feel that and to be convinced by it. But that's exactly what the spirit guide does is it takes you through that process to have conviction behind your worth. You also get my two other books and then info when we are launching Confessions of a Money Queen. So jessicaweaver.com, we have our blog, so much content there ways to get involved in our community and all the free resources. I absolutely love that quote you just said. And so I'm writing it down (laughs) because I was like, oh yeah, I'm blasting that all across social media. (laughs) What was it? (laughs) You just said there is nothing more you need to do to charge a higher price. Yep. Oh, yes. We're constantly in action mode, right? Once I get this certification, once I get my master's degree, once I do this, then I can do it today. That's your call to action. Do it now. (laughs) Do it for your next sales call, your next social media post. Raise the price so we can raise that 4% 
we talked about earlier, exactly. right? The 4% of income. And in general terms, women, we earn 10% of the world's wealth. So you can see, this is why I'm passionate. I want to blow that number through the roof. I want, imagine the change, the impact we could have in this world when we raise that. I love it. I love it. Speakeasy podcast listeners, uh, let me know how this episode resonated with you. Leave us a review on your favorite podcasting platform because guess what? It's all about you and or you can come and join the conversation. bit.ly forward slash world voice community. We look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya.